Good evening, and welcome to Newcastle After Dark. We are your hosts, the management. Coming to you from the land of Clafters and Mr. B's, bringing you films that are a feast for the mind. Tonight's film is 1968's Corruption, starring Peter Cushing, says David Lodge, Sue Lloyd, and Kate O'Mara. And it is a loose adaptation of the French film Eyes Without a Face. It is loosely. I mean, really, yeah, oh, it is. Very, yeah. very much. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the only few times that you'll see Peter Cushing in a contemporary setting. Yeah. Uh, this was a Columbia picture. That's right. This isn't. This isn't. Um, you know, produced by Hammer Films. Right. It is not a gothic setting. Mm-hmm. No. And um, you know the tagline, this movie on the poster was um, this is not a woman's picture something to that effect you know no woman uh, will be admitted to see this film alone well you know they had their gimmicks they did oh yeah they did you know because you know women were probably like really I'm gonna go see this anyway that's right twice (laughs) by myself that's right so sit back relax and enjoy 1968's Corruption Five hours, John. I don't know how you do it. It worked beautifully. Another success. It's an odd thing, Steve. The more you succeed, the more you fear the failures. John Rowan. Whatever are you doing there? <laughs> Linda, I, I'm afraid I fell asleep. Have you forgotten? You've forgotten what? The party. Mike Orm's party. Oh. Yes, I'm afraid I had forgotten, darling. A little bit tired. I insist that you come. You promised you would. Lots of pretty girls. Dancing. Music. You know I can never resist you. All right, dear, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. (laughs) 
My face. You're spoiling my face. That's impossible. My public face, the made-up one. I prefer the private one. All scrubbed and shiny. Uh, but we ought to go out. Mike's expecting us. I don't think he misses. Please, John. Just a brief personal appearance. By courtesy of Sir John Rowan. What's a girl like you doing in a place like this, huh? This is John Rowan. Huh? John, this is... How do you do? Oh, what's this, This array? camera made me famous, sweetheart. John's a surgeon, John. Yeah? Well, you come to the right place to get struck off the... Hey, Kate, fix a man a drink. Come on, I want to show you. Would you like a drink? Whiskey, Cubone? No, thank you. Hey, what's with all this, uh, Sir John Rowan, famous surgeon, huh? I'm going to marry him. Oh, yeah? For the title? Hmm? For the man. You're in the profession, then? Pardon? You're in the profession, photographer, you know. No, no. I'm a photographic model, you know. Oh, yes? <laughs> yes. What about your career, huh? Careers fade, darling. Marriage is forever. Oh. So they tell me. Come on, they tell you false, dear lady. They tell you false. Do you know what he said to me once? He said, you sold your soul for a mess of pottage. <laughs> What's pottage? I beg your pardon? Pottage. Oh, it's a staple diet. To the ancient Israelites, it was as rice is to the Chinese. But I don't like Chinese food. I don't like spare ribs. Have you ever been to Texas? <laughs> no, no, I, I've never been to Texas. Been to New York. I did an operation there. You're a doctor. How's your kiss of life? I've had a heavy day. I have to operate again in the morning. But can we slip away now? The party's just beginning. Hey, it's yes. a gas, isn't it? Me! Stop it, up, Kate. Me! Me! Photograph me! Hey, take a day off. If I'm going to photograph anyone, I'm going to photograph you, baby. Have your fun with little Kate. Oh, may we go, please, Lynn? But I want to stay. Please, Lynn. Don't let's spoil the party, darling. Don't let's spoil the party, darling. Kate, can you do me a favor? Of course. Go play in the track. Come on. 
Okay, Mike. Okay, come on, let's show it. Oh, yeah? And that's it. Oh, this is going to be great. Hey, hey I'm fine. Come on, get out of the way, will you? Me, me, Come me, on, Kate, cool it, will you? Ah. Cool it, Kate. What the hell's wrong with you? Oh, that's beautiful, baby. That's really great. Now, bump some cushions in, will you? That's it. Now, get down on the deck, baby. Down on the deck, sweetheart. That's it. Drape yourself up, baby. Oh, come on. Hey, let's see those beautiful legs. That's it. Now, relax. That's beautiful. Oh, come on. Come on. All right. Give me the pretty girl, baby. That's it. Freak out, baby. Come on. That's it. That's it. Oh, sexy. That. Come on. Give me more of that. Come on, baby. You can do it. Lovely. Now oh, you're getting me at it. Oh, that's it. That's beautiful. Oh. Now let's make him really kinky. Undo your dress. Don't be shy. That's it, baby. Take it off. I said, Michael. Oh, hold it. That's enough. Beautiful. Hold it. Hey, that's I'll... enough. What are you talking about? Come on. Come I on. Leave it alone. I'm going to take your pictures. Just a minute. Hang on. We are going. You, you may be going, man, but... Come on, what's the matter? Are you scene. mad at What? Come on, get something nose crap. Give me that back. What's the matter with you? Come on, get out of here. What the hell's wrong with you? You stole over something? That's a bloody expensive oh. camera. <laughs> <laughs> Call an ambulance. Get me a blanket. Move! Dr. Piper wanted in casualty immediately, please. Dr. Piper in casualty. Dr. de Rougemont in surgery. Dr. de Rougemont in surgery, please. Right. How is she? We've saved her sight. And her face? Plastic surgery will help, of course. Oh, my God. You should have let me assist at the John, he's reasonable. You were in no condition. I could have done something. We've done anything. everything we can at this time. All we can do now is to wait. John, they called me. What's happened to Lynn? Are you a relative? I'm Lynn's sister. What's happened? I'm Dr. Harris. I'm afraid there's been an accident. A flood lamp crashed into your sister's face. Oh, no. Can I see her? Uh, not at the moment. She's still unconscious. But is she going to be all right? We're doing everything we can. If you'll excuse me, I must get back. Thank you, Steve. John, how did it happen? Oh, uh, the party was getting wild. Lynn, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Come on now. It's all right. That nightmare. I know, I know. But it's all right. You're awake now. <sighs> My nightmare doesn't end when I wake. I think you should have another sleeping tablet. Tablets? Pills? Why has he brought us here? Darling, John is trying everything he knows. He hasn't stopped working for a moment since it happened. He loves you. I'm sure that given time... Well, don't well, lie to me. You know the truth. It's over. It's not over. Look, John says that... Don't. I'm not a child. I'll never regain my looks. That is ridiculous. Perhaps you better have a tablet. Leave the bottle here. Please. 
No, Lynn. You know I can't do that. You mustn't give up so easily. They haven't even started graftings yet. You'll see. Have you any idea how long a process it is? How painful it is? Try to get some sleep. If I have a tablet, promise me you'll be here when I wake up. I promise. How is she? Well, she's sleeping again, but I'm worried about her. John, you're becoming obsessed shut away in here with all these old books. You've got to face facts and get back to your own work. This is my work now. Living tissue can be restored without the pain of continual graftings. Plastic surgeons are only just beginning to rediscover the ground covered by the Egyptians thousands of years ago. With today's knowledge and modern techniques, there's hope of completely restoring her. You can restore her face, but what about her mental state? John, she just asked me to leave the sleeping tablets with her. I'm afraid she's losing her mind. Have you thought about that? Of course I have. I know what she's going through. Why do you think I'm doing all this? Now, please leave me alone. I must concentrate. Oh, please, John. No, please leave me alone! I believe there is hope, real hope. Thank you, John. Is Lynn awake? Yes. Oh, I'm glad to see her. I have some good news for her, love. Oh, I'm glad. She needs cheering up. Well, this should help. Well, what about this? Later. Hello, Lynn. How are you? What have you got there? It's a guinea pig. I reproduced your injuries on her. Yes. Oh, John, how can you be so cruel? I had to experiment. Now, listen to me carefully. I found a cure, an entirely new process. Look, the animal's perfectly normal again. No. No ill effects, nothing at all. And for me? Would it work, John? Could it? Yes, Lynn. I'm sure of it. Rest now.
Good afternoon, Sir John. Oh, hello, Bert. You haven't been down here in months. No, I've been away. I believe you have a patient of mine, a young woman. A patient of yours, Sir John? Mm -hmm. A young woman? No, sir. Unless this one. Miss Alice Webber, that one? Yes, that's her. She's a car accident. Yes, but she was my patient for several months before that. I diagnosed a tumour of the thalamus. I want to make an examination. There's been a slip-up somewhere, then. Dr. Harris is booked to do a post-mortem at three. Yes, he can't make it. He asked me to. Very well. Anything else, sir? No, thanks, Bert. Unless you want to help. Oh, oh no, sir. Uh, it's uh, my lunch break, sir, you know, sir. Uh, late lunch, sir. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. say what he was doing, Doctor, but he did say that you knew all about it, though. All right, you can go. All right, sir. Do you realize what you're doing? You've broken every known rule of ethics, and you've seriously jeopardized my postmortem. She died of a rib piercing the heart. What the devil have you done? I've taken the pituitary. It's opened up a whole new field, Steve. I believe I've discovered an entirely new way of controlling the endocrine system to promote tissue growth. You've found a way of destroying your whole career. Now, Steve, undo me. There's nothing you can say to me that I haven't already said to myself. I know exactly what I'm doing. I should report this, John. I should, but I won't. But if you ever do anything like this again, I'll have to. I mean it, John. I'll report you to the Medical Council. Well, I removed the pituitary gland from the head of the body in the morgue. Leave it. Oh, John, I'll never be any use to you. Well, I wouldn't have asked you to help me if I wasn't absolutely sure you can do it. I know you can. Raise. Are you all right? Sure. Scalpel. Forceps. Swap. Swab. Forehead. That's right.
swab. This is the most crucial part. I have to cut deep with the laser. She won't bleed much. The computer controls the depth that the laser beam cuts. All right? Syringe. This contains the fluid that controls tissue growth through the endocrine system. John, is there anything else I can get? Shh. She's sleeping comfortably. I'll stay with her. You get some rest. Her face? What about her face? She'll be all right, Val. Let me stay with her. You get some sleep. Go to bed. All right. Good night. Good night. Mr. Harris, how nice to see you. Do come through. Oh, thank you. John was very mysterious on the phone. How is he? Very well. And your sister? You'll see. Steve, I'm so glad you could come. For one thing, it means I'm forgiven, and I wanted you to see the new Lynn. Hello, Steve. But, but it's incredible. May I? Not incredible, but brilliant. It could be the skin of a young child. It is marvelous, isn't it? Steve, you sit here. John, you must publish. You'll have to tell how you did it. I may well do that. Not before dinner, please. <laughs> Charlie, it's astonishing. You used the pituitary and the thalamus from that dead girl. Mm-hmm. You took one hell of a risk, John. We don't know enough about the endocrine system yet. How can you be certain of the consequences? It worked. The secretion is functioning normally. Yes, but for how long? What about side effects? Steve, I have Lynn back as she was. That's the only thing that interests me. Now, all she needs is a complete rest. I thought a sea voyage might do her good. We're going away for a few weeks. Isn't it wonderful? Three weeks cruising in the Caribbean. I envy you. I envy myself. More brandy? Mm, thank you. No more for me, darling. A little for you. Please. Steve, Val will be on her own in London while we're away. 
Hope you can see something of each other. Well, that'll be a pleasure, of course. Well, here's to a wonderful cruise. And to your success, John. Well, thank you, Steve. May it last. <laughs> yes, I know. Would you like some coffee? I'd love some. Fine. Hey, you've got a cable. Cable? Mm-hmm. It'll be from Lynn and John. Not bad news, I hope. Well, I'm not sure. They're flying home. They'll be here tomorrow. What happened to the remainder of the cruise? I don't know. They've got another ten days to go yet. I hope nothing's gone wrong. <laughs> Welcome home. Don't touch me. Whatever's the matter? Matter? Thank you, Cammy. Sit down. Oh, you All right. Trust me, last time I used dead tissue, it must be human living tissue. You'll be all right then, don't you? I promise you.
dreaming. I hope you're not thinking of staying the night. You're my last client. It's a fiver. Five pounds. Well, I don't do it for nothing, you know. Oh, of course not. That's it. Well, take your coat off at least. Just a minute. Hello? Oh, hello, Tanya. No, I've still got company. No, I've had enough for today. Oh, help yourself to a drink. Won't be a minute. You've had some funny ones. You're joking. No, this one's all right. What? No. He... Never. He did what? A native dance? He did a native dance? Oh, oh my God. It's hysterical. A prince? No. Oh, Turkish. Yes, well, there's lots of them about. Yes, I have, last month. Oh, no, I'll tell a lie. It wasn't Turkish. Oh, well, uh, I've got to go now. Yes, duty calls. Oh, bring me back in ten minutes. Oh, well, perhaps you'd better make it twenty. All right. Bye, love. Speak to you then. Sorry about that. Bloody nuisance she is. Always rings at the wrong moment. Now, where are you going? Come on. You're not shy, are you? Embarrassed? That's my trouble. You'll get over it like I did. My regulars, and you do meet some nice men, are always asking me, what's a nice girl like me doing in this business? I've had proposals. I can't bear it! I can't bear it! Look at me! No! 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 Can't do anything. Go anywhere. You don't know what to do. Mind I can't ask Val to help this time. You'll have to get yourself ready. Who was she? Does it... does it matter? It must work this time, It must. Oh, do you feel that? Do you feel it? That's it. Now 
now you got it. Now, come on, give me something. Come on, that's it. Beautiful, that's nice. That's it, that's it. Now, look at that glass. Come on, you love it, you love it. That's it, sweetheart. Oh, that's it. Oh, man, you got it made after that, eh? That's the one. Come on, one more. Now, take the drink away. That's it. Beautiful, hold that. Right, don't get changed, Mary. Okay. Lynn, that, that's fantastic, Lynn. Hey, baby, mm, look at that. Hey, that doctor's a genius. Glad you think so. So when do we start work? I thought you'd given up your career. I must work. I've got to prove something. To the doctor? To myself. So I'm not leaving until you give me the OK. Well, I tell you what, uh, let's talk about it over lunch, hmm? Can't make lunch. I'm going to meet Val and go shopping. Well, dinner, then. Oh. Still the doctor. Yeah, well, look, Lynn, this, uh, this comeback bit. Comeback? What are you talking about? But you don't think you can carry on from where you left off, do you? It's your doctor who's the genius, baby, not me. Look, Lynn, you've been off the scene so many months. Well, that's ridiculous. It was only a few months ago that... Listen, Lynn. No, you listen. Look at my face. It's as good as it ever was. Give me some bookings, and in a few weeks, I'll be back exactly where I was. Back where you were? Listen, baby, where you were, I put you there. And don't you forget that. And the day you blew me out, baby, you blew the whole scene because you're washed up, finished. I made you. You think you made me? It was me that made you, sweetheart. My face. Who are you? Cameras, lights, lens. The only thing that you ever had was me. My face. Hello, darling. I spent an absolute fortune. It looks like it. Here, let me take those. Oh, Val, before I forget, Steve rang. He wants you to call him back. Oh, good. You come and rest, darling. Phew, what a day. Oh. Do you know a man tried to pick me up today? Said I was one of the most beautiful women he'd ever seen. Is that supposed to make me jealous? No. Proud. Oh, hello. After all, it's the beauty you gave to me. And I'm very grateful. Bought you a present. Which one? This one. Open it. Since you won't let me work anymore, I thought you should be the one to photograph me. You'd prefer that, wouldn't you? I don't want to call Mike again. Although he has called me. That's fine, Steve. Bye-bye. The other equipment's coming later. What other equipment? Lights, everything. We must take pictures that we can both be proud of. After all, I am your masterpiece. Quite right. We can never be grateful enough. What did Steve want? He's coming to pick me up for dinner about eight. Ah, oh, that's nice. He asked how you were. I told him you were all right now. What did you tell him? I told him about Lynn's setback. Was I wrong? No, of course not, darling. Why shouldn't Steve know? I mean, he's practically one of the family now, isn't he? Well, I don't know about that. I'm sure of it. Come on, darling. Let's try on those new dresses. Taking up a new hobby? <laughs> no, it's an idea of Lynn's. She lives for cameras. How is she? Val said there'd been a setback. <laughs> Nothing serious. Val worries too much. Slight epidermis infection, that's all. It's a tricky business you've taken on, John. I've been reading up on it. It seems Kepering in Germany tried something similar. His methods had no lasting effect. I read the medical journals, too. Over a lengthy period of treatment, his patients suffered enormous mental pressure from constant repetition. Kepering's theory is a little dated. 
Do you intend to publish your findings? Eventually, yes. I think it's your duty to, John. And what's more? Already? Hello, Val. You're looking very nice, Lynn. Thank you. Well, the, uh, the Armstrongs are expecting us at eight, so I think we'd better get going. Good night, Lynn. Good night. Good night. Have a nice time. Sorry to rush off like this. That's all right. Well, we won't be late. It's not very far. Good night, John. See you later, Val. Perhaps we can continue our talks another time, then. Good night. Good night, John. What's the matter, darling? It's about that girl. It says new clues in headless girl murder. Police believe killer had medical knowledge. Well, look. No, I don't want to look. It's just a filler piece. No news, so the editor rehashes an old story. But they, they must know something. They've established that medical knowledge was used in the killing. Darling, you know what papers are. Journalese. Means nothing. Forget it. Forget it. Darling, why don't we go down to the cottage at Seaford? Stay a week or so, or however long we need. It would be nice to get away. Welcome back. Well, you know, the first thing that we noticed on this film was how beautifully it is shot. Yeah, it is. And the music is outstanding. It is. Um, that's Bill McGuffey. He's awesome. Oh, he is. Um, I guess, you know, he would play, you know, often with uh, Benny Goodman. And I think in the early 50s, um, he was one of Britain's um, best pianists. Wow. Well, you know, I had read that he had a club called the Niner Club because he only had nine fingers. Is that for real? I think so. Really? But he jammed with them nine fingers. He did. And like we said, I enjoy the music. It works uh, really well. I do well. too. Yeah, always. And yeah. it gives that very 60s feel. It does. Oh, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Now, in this film, you know, Peter Cushing was about 55 years old. And Sue Lloyd, playing his girlfriend, she was about 28. And, you know, I felt bad. You know, he was out of place at that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Crazy party, right? You know, in his suit, he just got done with surgery, and he was yeah. tired. He didn't really want to be there. No. Yeah. And then that sleazy photographer had to just make matters worse with that bad wig. I assume it was a wig. If it I wasn't it was a wig, wig, if it wasn't a wig, <laughs> yeah, that dude's hair is strong. It's strong. I wish my hair was strong like. That. I don't know, man. You know, I think I'd rather be bald than have that wig. At this point, I bet the wind wouldn't even move that. Hair. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> No. He had that little mustache. He did, you know, and I had said, reminded me a little bit of Terry Thomas because of that mustache. Right. Yeah. But we were saying that, you know, if Peter Cushing would have been a younger man and the photographer would have been, you know, getting all sleazy there with his girl. Yeah. He would have knocked him smooth out. Completely. Oh, yeah. Completely. There would have been no lamps being knocked over. No. But, you know, unfortunately, it happened. And yeah, and you know, of course he feels bad. Oh, of course. You know, he's trying to you know, fix this problem. And you feel bad for him. Yeah. Right? I mean, really. And I'm originally feeling bad for her, but I'm not so sure. I agree. You know, there's something I going agree. on with her. I mean, he, you know, he goes out there to, you know, kill for his love. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, that scene with the prostitute was actually filmed twice. Uh, there was a second actress that did the scene topless. And uh, it was for another market, I think for the U.S. Oh, really? Yeah. But we aren't showing that version. But you know, the scene still works. It does work. It does still work. Yeah. It's still a good scene. It is. I don't know if them dolls had to be in there. We've said it many times. You know, I mean, dolls really aren't 
our favorite thing? I'd have been like, walk in the room, walk out the room. <laughs> we're gonna find another one. Yeah, I'll find another one. <laughs> you just <laughs> you just dodged the bullet, right? <laughs> right. Saw that raggedy end up there. <laughs> exactly. 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 But again, like we said, it's off to a good start. It is. It is. So let's get back to corruption. Some degeneration, but it doesn't show. Not to the naked eye. How long before it does show? A week. A little longer, perhaps. A week. That's plenty of time to prepare another operation. Now the equipment's right. I can't do it, Lynn. Not again. What do you mean? I'm sworn to preserve life. I'll take it. You're sworn to one thing. I could never forget that. But it's not necessary to operate again. Not necessary? I love you, Lynn. I want to marry you. Now. Why? Guilt? Pity? Don't ever pity me, John. Do you think I could ever be happy being tolerated, pitied? Lynn. I love you too. I'm utterly dependent on you. I want to feel safe with you. But the scar would always be there reminding us. I want to be able to forget. It's the only way it could work for us. It really is. Do you know the valve phone today? I know. How was she? Terribly excited. Steve's asked her to marry him. Isn't that wonderful news? Oh, yes. Aren't you happy about it? Oh, yes, of course I am, for them. I'm not quite so happy about Steve being so close to us. Jean, darling? No. I prefer scotch, please.
Darling? Look. Come over here. What? On the beach. The girl. See the rucksack? She must be a hitchhiker or something. Such a shame. Appears to be all alone. Darling, why don't you go down and talk to her? Seemed like a good idea. Well, you know all that stuff about freedom of the road and that. I, you know, took off. It didn't work out, though. Not really. Freedom. I mean, I was what was free. You know, this crowd, I mean, they're okay, but, you know, I, I didn't like being shared out. I mean, basically, I'm a one-man girl. I learned that, you know. That's educational. That's useful to know. Thanks. Beatniks is okay, but frankly, you know, none of them seem too clean to me. You've no family then? Not really. Well, it's a goofy aunt somewhere. You know what I was thinking when your husband came up to chat me? I was thinking of the sea. I was swimming out there, except I can't swim for toffee, and forgetting about everything. You know, like striking out for Ireland or some place that never existed. But you'd have drowned. Well, that's what I mean, you know. Then up comes your husband and I think, well, he's making a pass. Like, if my wife and I would be delighted if you'd join us for lunch a bit. I thought, yeah, well, first, there's not going to be any wife. And second, lunch is going to be served in bed. Then why did you come? I figured, what the hell? At least he's clean. I'm glad you didn't. Didn't? Swim away from us, I mean. Be nice if you could stay a while. Hey, you mean that? Great. Um, do you mind? I mean, you know, could I have a little more of that ham? Not this kid, not her. Why? She's young, she's got her whole life before her. So have I. She's perfect. No family, no friends, no one knows where she is. The other one, she was a prostitute. Her life was a mess. Anyway, that's the way I tried to justify killing her. But not this kid. She said she'd kill herself anyway. She made the decision. At least this way her death will be useful. You can justify that, can't you? No, Lynn. I can't. Not her. I won't do it. All right, then. If you won't, then I will. I mean it. I'm I'm Shut up, Lynn!
She must have heard us. She's gone. What? Oh. <laughs> Fix myself a sandwich. I hope you don't mind. No, not at all. <laughs> oh, sorry about the nighty. <laughs> sort of fits where it touches. Is anything wrong? Good night, Terry. Good night. Listen, Rick, I don't like this setup. It's creepy. Let's have the milk. What do you mean, creepy? He was in my room earlier. I... So? OK, but with his wife here? Maybe the swingers. No, it's more than that. He keeps watching me. Everywhere I go, I see, I see his eyes staring at me. I don't like it. Never mind about that. Where's the stuff? I haven't had a chance to look round. I've told you, he keeps watching me. She must have some jewellery somewhere. But I've only ever seen her in a swimsuit. And who wears jewellery in a swimsuit? Listen, Georgie Benz, this is a great setup. Remote house, they don't have friends calling. Georgie says we can make plenty of bread here, but only if you do your job right. I don't care what Georgie says. I don't like it. I'm not staying, Rick. Now, listen. Shh. What are you doing? I'm getting out. Georgie won't like that. I'd sooner face Georgie than him. Now, hang on. Hey, let me go, Rick. No. Well, there's not that much of a hurry, is there? No, Rick, not now. No, let me go. Well, it's weeks since we've been near a bed. No, no, Rick, no. We've well, we'll been out a bit by morning. No. ready. Terry? What's the matter? Well, the door's locked. Just a minute. Terry! Terry? Terry? Terry! I got in through the window. It's wide open. She's really gone this time. What are we going to do? You must operate soon.
doors, please. Blimey! It's my station. Excuse me, Governor. Over the doors. Over the doors. Madam? Not this one, Porsche. I'd like a non-smoker, please. Well, there's one here, madam. Thank you. Porter saw it. When they find the body, he'll remember me. Let's get away from here quickly. Steve, are you sure? I tell you, I heard it on my car radio. A headless body found under the seat of the train. At Seaford? On the line from Seaford. Well, it's too much of a coincidence. First here in London, and Lynn makes an astonishing recovery. They go off to Seaford, and it happens again. Both bodies headless, and the glands John needs for the operation are in the skull. Don't, please don't. You must be mad. Well, he was always obsessed with Lynn. She can't know what he's doing. We'll have to get down there right away and get her away from him. She's suffered too much already to be involved in this. 
Is there a train? It's a pretty regular service to Seaford. What about every hour? I'll check. No, no, you get the taxi. I'll call the station. prepared the gland? No. No, I haven't. Then do it now. For me. Came back. Ah! Miss Teddy, she saw it. Stop her.
drink at this rate, you won't be fit to operate tomorrow. Please, John, I need you. What for? To kill? To kill some more? How many times must I kill? We have what we need. Just once more. And then again. And again. No, Lynn. I can't. It's over. I won't do it. John, I beg you. No. No, Lynn. All right. I'll call the police. Police? Yes. I'll tell them you're mad. Who do you think they'll believe? You or me? I don't care, Lynn. I believe I am mad. You think what, I, what I've done for you. You call the police. What was that? Call the police. Call the fuzz. What the hell are you doing here? Grover, the phone. Mm. Rick. Sandy. You wanted the phone? Enjoyed that, didn't you? <laughs> he's like an animal. Does what he's told. No questions. <laughs> Not responsible, are you, Groper? If I tell him to hurt something, he does it. He enjoys hurting things. Now, we don't want any trouble, do we? She's not in there, Georgie. Try the other one. Have you seen that little in there? husband is a doctor. He does research work. Oh, he's a doctor, Georgie. I bet he does a few schneid operations on the quiet in there, eh? More there, Mark. Terry said you was a little darling. She was right. Oh, you're Terry's friends. And that explains it. Explains what? She said she ran away from filth. <laughs> Should have recognized you at once. Do you hear that, Rick? You hear how your wife talks about you? Played her part well, then, didn't she? Where is she? Terry, your wife. Hmm. She came yesterday and spent the day, then left, taking my husband's wristwatch with her. What time did she cut out? Cut out. Go, leave. I have no idea. Um, sometime after dinner, wasn't it, John? Liar. You are, you know. Because at 2 a.m., you caught her getting a glass of milk and a sandwich. Do something, John. Do something. Get out! Terry left here last night because you frightened her. I frightened her even more. So she came back. Terry was casing the pad for us. We were going to turn you over. Where is she? Where is Terry? Get out! Get out! Leave us! Leave us! <laughs> Oh, 
Lad's woken up. Where's the girl? She did come back. Well, where is she now? I don't know. I tell you. I tell you. I tell you. I tell you. Come. My husband made a fool of himself with that. So I threw her out. That's more like it. Well, Terry wouldn't look at him. She's looked at everybody else. All right. Turn the pad over. Great. There's no need to destroy the places. Groper. All right, then. Show us where the bread is. Money, jewellery, valuables. Come on, do you want to show us? The bitch! The ling! Drop her, watch Yeah! Call it! Turning over's off the front. <laughs> 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 What's this, then? It's a laser. Oh. I'll settle for the jewellery. You can help me, Georgie. Yeah? Where's the stuff? I'm in need of urgent medical treatment. From me? An operation on my face. My husband refuses to do it. Why? Well, that doesn't matter, but what does matter is that you can help me by making him do it. Why should oh. I? Money. You want my jewellery? I've none here. I've, I've lots in London. Take this. Take it. I've lots more, I promise you. Give you anything, anything. But help me. That's better. Now, what's wrong with your face? Ten sun! <laughs> Yeah, I'm hungry. Anybody else for food? Yeah, I fancy a touch of the picnics, don't you, Groper? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Grand easy. I'll see what's in the fridge. <laughs> no! You keep out of there! <laughs> it doesn't mean you begrudge food to a weary traveller. Face up. Ruined her looks. Her face looks all right to me. Yeah, it comes on suddenly. Something to do with a tissue. I've got news for you, Doc. You're going to operate. Don't be a fool. She's explained it to me. Now, you get your needle and get started. I don't know what you're talking about. I've nothing prepared anyway. Well, get it prepared. I can't! You want to bet? Grandpa! Bring him in here.
What's that then? Pre-med, anaesthetic. Main lining for real. Go on. <coughs> Watch him. <coughs> <coughs> It's a girl. It's a. It's a girl. Oh, it's horrible. If he did that, what's he done with Terry? No, Georgie. Not till you find out what he's done with Terry. I'll find out. That nut is going to talk. Ah! <coughs> Grover, get him! <coughs> now, you murdering lunatic, where's Terry? She's dead. Dead? <gasps> Don't tell me you didn't know about it. He killed her. He killed her. I swear I had nothing to do with it. He she, killed her. He should swear anything. He killed my wife. My Terry? Well, where is she? Where is she? Where is she? She's on the beach. Terry. You... I'll kill you! No! no, no don't don't harm him! Don't! He killed her! No, me, no, me. don't! Don't! I'll tell you, I'll show you where she is. Rick, you go with her. I'll settle with this one. When I come back, you will make him operate, won't you, Georgie? You promise me? You promise me? Yeah. Come. Grover! <laughs> you raving lunatic! You tell me everything! <clears throat> well, where is she, then? Where'd you leave her? Down there, amongst the rocks, just by the point. Where? I can't see her. There. Look. Can you see? No. Just at the foot of the cliff. Oh! Ah! <laughs> Why don't you relax? <laughs> Grover, no! Well, where's Rick? Rick? On the beach. I left to never Terry. Terry, John. Terry. It was awful. The, t the tide was coming in. We had to pull her out of the water. The water. Did you go in the water? Of course I was in the water. Well, why is it wet? <laughs> Rotten liar! Oh! No! Go for now! Take Sandy and get the cops a barrier. Don't worry about me, get the cops! Sit down. Terry was in the water, Shut up. Tanya. Save you for the coppers. Tell your lousy lies to them. You're mad, you're both raving nuts! Doctor!
to get here. I'm so sorry. I was more tired than I thought. Hi! Huh? Oh, wait a minute, sweetheart, huh? Hello, then. Hello. Mike, this is John Rowan. John Mike. How do you do? Hello. Man whose camera made me famous. Man whose camera made me famous. Man whose camera made me famous. Hey, Kate, give me a drink. Hey, Kate, give me a drink. How do you do? Don't let's spoil the party. Undo your dress. Take it off. Undo your dress. Take it off. Undo your dress. Take it off. That's enough. I said, Michael, that's enough. Well, we've reached a conclusion of corruption. And it is very surprising to me that it was all a bad dream. You know, and it bums me out a little bit because, you know, finally here we are. Everybody is dead. Everybody's dead. Right? Everybody's dead. They all right? deserve Rightfully it. so. Rightfully so. Exactly. And I'm like, credits are going to roll. That's the end. Love it. That's great. Great ending. Yes. It's, and it's a. Uh, it's all a bad dream. You know, a little bummed out. Right. Well, you know, Peter Cushing had said that uh, <clears throat> he did this film because the script was so good. But unfortunately, the investors in the film could not agree on what they wanted the end result to be. So that's what we have. We have the film that is the result of their disagreement. Well, you know, and you can have that even in the best of films. Yeah. And absolutely. you do. And it's still a good film. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I really enjoyed the scene where they were driving out to the cottage, you know, for a little R&R, a &R, little shibbity shabbity. Shabbity, yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. What well, was either that or he was going golfing? You know. Yeah, on the cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right into you know? the ocean. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were very pleased to see the... Uh, Dummy. The dummy. In this case, it's the UK dummy. He's a little more reserved. He is, you know, because I believe, you know, that they, it's their own philosophy, you yeah. know, that they all have their own dummy. Uh, you know, US has theirs, Britain has theirs, um, you know, Argento has his, and oh, yeah. you know, for the Italians. Um, I love to see the dummy out of a window, off of a cliff. I agree. Always. I agree. Yeah. Now, you know, the American version of the dummy, his leg flaps back when he falls. <laughs> okay. You're right. The UK You're right. version, his leg stayed, okay. A little more reserved. The Italian version, arms move. <laughs> <laughs> and the face goes up against the rocks, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, there's always, so there's little subtle differences. Yes. Um, with the dummies. Yes. But they're still all very enjoyable. Well, we love them We all. love them, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The dummy is an unsung hero. That's right. And you know, there's a great scene in here uh, when he's on the train, he's about to kill, yes. kill the girl. And, you know, we had said it reminded us uh, a little bit of George Romero's Martin. Yes. Which would come later. Which is a great film. It's a great film. And, you know, I love that scene as well. Um, the camera works different. Yes. You know, the lens is different. Yes. Filming is a little more... Um, it's frantic. It is. It is. Yes. You know, and it's a little grindhouse-ish. It is. And it works. I love it. It, yeah. it really is good. Yeah. Uh, in the end, when the robbery was taking place, which was a surprise. It was. But yeah, I absolutely. guess in a dream, anything can happen. Yeah, exactly. But uh, the big henchman, Groper, that's David Lodge. And he was best friends with Peter Sellers. Wow. And he's known for other roles and, you know, uh, doing stuff with Spike Jones. Right. 
but you really didn't have a whole lot going on here. No. Smash that apple. <laughs> you keep eating it. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing. Robbery or not, that woman keeps blowing that oh. whistle. I'd have lost my mind. I'd have, yeah. I would have not been cool. <laughs> I'd have been like, enough with the whistle. I guess they would have smacked me around, you know, because. They'd have had to kill me. <laughs> They'd have had to kill me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that was getting a little old because she kept doing it. You know, they're robbing you. Yeah. They're eating your food. They're eating your food. Right. Smashing apples on your rug. <laughs> Bobby getting mad. I'd be mad. Right? I'd be mad. I, I don't know how much I could take. I'd be like, you could take anything out of this house. Just quit blowing that whistle. <laughs> Not with you. But you know, yeah. that woman was big. She would probably beat me up. Smacked her around a little bit at she least. She probably would have. You know? Probably would have. Yeah. But you know, also at this point, I lost all sympathy for Sue Lloyd. But is it because of the treatments? You know, didn't they say earlier, you know, that it caused, what was it, madness? madness. Right. Yeah, I yeah. mean. So it's possible. Yes. But I think she probably had a little bit of that um, narcissism, yes. vanity kind of thing going yes. on. You know, it's just, you know, enhanced that. Yes. Yeah. And like, like you said, I was okay with everybody dying at the end. Yeah. And, you know, so in the end, though, when he wakes up from his nap and he goes to the party, I mean, I guess he has to let that dude take them pictures. Yeah, you'd have to, wouldn't you? You know, you'd have to let that unfold. And of course, you know, stories. I guess I'm gonna, you know. Who knows, I guess that's, I guess know. I'm gonna smoke these funny cigarettes. These hippies are, you know. <laughs> but that's the whole thing of the dream at the end of the movie. Yes. You don't really know, do they continue? Do they go, ah, it was just a bad dream. Right. Or do they, Repeat. You know, follow what that premonition may have been. True. You know? That's a good point. That's a very so, good point. You don't know, and that's up for you know, that's for us to decide and yes. make up. Yes. You know? So really, outside of the of the dream at the end, I'll take it. I will too. Yeah. I really yep. enjoyed it. Absolutely. We thank you for being here with us at Newcastle After Dark. We hope you join us again for the Lost Treasure in Cinema. And until next time, good, good night. night.